You're just an annoying clown dressed up as a sex toy. Over the past 10 years, we've seen the rise of a new kind of movie star, one who's just as comfortable being the butt of the joke as he is making you look at his butt. Actors like Chris Pratt, Dave Bautista, Channing Tatum, Ryan Reynolds, and most recently, Kumail Nanjiani have combined comic timing with time in the gym, making them capable of killer punchlines and punching killers. Metaphors are gonna go over his head. Nothing goes over my head. My reflexes are too fast. I would catch it. These are the buff clowns, combining the best of both action and comedy as they climb to the top of the Hollywood totem pole. So, who is this new Hollywood hero? Unsurprisingly, a buff clown must be buff, and not just cute guy at the gym buff. These are the kind of guys who post Instagram photos of themselves lifting giant tires with 46 inspiring hashtags. Those muscles aren't just for show, either. I'm a very strong puncher. The buff clown fights the bad guy, saves the girl, and all the other important tasks that Hollywood has taught us to expect from dudes who look like they might go Super Saiyan at any moment. It's a long story, but basically I'm a bit of a hero. While the buff clown's body puts him squarely in a long line of Hollywood hunks, what comes out of his mouth doesn't quite match up. Sometimes he's stupid. Kevin, hi, can you answer the phone, please? I can't, it's in the fish tank. Uh, no, the one on the desk that's ringing, that one. Oh, that one. Yep. What's his place called again? Other times, he's a coward. A moment ago, I most definitely shit my pants. And sometimes, he's just supremely awkward. Even when he's a cocky, wise-cracking badass like the old 80s action heroes, it's usually setting him up to look like an idiot a moment later. Ooh, Jason Bourne ain't got shit on me. <laughs> the buff clown has become one of today's masculine ideals that seems to dominate blockbuster movies, but he's often used to skewer stereotypes of toxic masculinity and ridiculous egotism. He can also play against expectations of masculinity. That might mean caring about grooming or other traditionally feminine priorities. What is your skincare regimen? Because you look like a young Shirley Temple. It could include flirting with a sexual openness that was once verboten for a leading man. Whose balls did I have to fondle to get my very own movie? I can't tell you, but it does rhyme with pulverine. Other times it means being willing to show weakness. Why aren't you wearing one of Rocket's arrow rigs? I have sensitive nipples. Just as some actors who play the buff clown have been powerfully open in the media about their own vulnerabilities. You work so hard and then somebody's saying that, well, you're just not good enough. And I fell into a deep depression. Here's our take on the relatively new phenomenon of the buff clown and how understanding the rise of this archetype reveals how American attitudes have changed over the past three decades. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to get notified about all our new videos. The classic movie heartthrob is cool, brawny, and dashingly handsome. The classic movie clown is, well, none of those. We all thought that Adrian's body was just much, much better than yours. It's hard to imagine Charlie Chaplin telling Ingrid Bergman that they'll always have Paris, or Steve Martin punching Nazis to save Marion Ravenwood. As Hollywood embraced action movies, writers realized that cracking wise could make its heroes seem badass. Yeah. Stick around. But while these characters could spout a catchphrase, it would be a stretch to call them funny. There were a few exceptions. Keanu Reeves could jump from Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. All we are is dust in the wind, dude. To point break. Still, he kept his action and his comedy in different movies. Arnold Schwarzenegger managed a string of successful comedies such as Twins and Kindergarten Cop and his masterpiece Jingle All the Way. Who told you you can eat my cookies? But considering that he also became a two-term governor, perhaps the regular rules simply don't apply to him. When other leading men tried to follow Schwarzenegger, it led to disasters like Stop or My Mom Will Shoot, the Sylvester Stallone bomb that Roger Ebert called moronic beyond comprehension. Mom, what are you doing here? I came to back you up. Get inside. The lesson was clear. Unless you were Mr. Olympia or The One, audiences wanted to admire their leading men's perfection, not giggle at their foibles, at least until a sitcom actor became the biggest movie star in the world. What's a nine-letter word for incredible? Oh, that's easy. Will Smith. Will Smith rocketed to fame as the lead in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, where he often made himself the butt of the joke. Listen carefully, Will, and I know you can hear me with ears that big. <laughs> But less than two months after the series finale, Will Smith opened the movie that became the biggest box office hit of the year and cemented him as a movie star. Welcome to Earth. 
In Independence Day, Smith is a classic action hero, punching aliens and saving the world. But while he has the toughness, cool, and sex appeal of previous action heroes, he also has something they don't. He's funny. I'll take care, all right? None but love for you. None but love for you. Smith dials up the traditional action hero confidence until it becomes comical, making the audience laugh at his character even as we root for him. This was supposed to be my weekend off. But no. Got me out here dragging your heavy ass through the burning desert. Making Captain Hiller funny not only served Smith's natural skills, it also served a more complex social purpose. It helped audiences root for a black lead. After all, action heroes like Harrison Ford, Bruce Willis, and Mel Gibson were all white icons. Audiences had rarely been asked to idolize a black action hero, and making the character silly punctured his perfection just enough to make Americans comfortable. Been big old dumbbell ears. What you with them chicken legs? This combination of badass and hilarious worked so well for Will Smith that he quickly capitalized on it with a string of action comedy box office hits like Men in Black and Wild Wild West. It'd just be raining black people in New York. By the time he starred in the massive hit Bad Boys 2, Smith was cracking jokes and cracking jaws with muscles that looked like he could bench press Adam Sandler and Jim Carrey at the same time. Oh, that one puckered up my butthole. The buff clown is already a double threat, funny and strong, but how cool would it be for him to become a triple threat by also learning a new language? The most addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language is through Babbel, my favorite language learning app. Babbel's 15-minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Just choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Whether you're thinking of going abroad, connecting in a deeper way with family, or you just have some free time, Babbel will help you so you can use your new skill out in the real world. I chose to brush up on my Spanish, and it has really paid off. Now I'm excited to travel and try out my new language skills. Plus, there are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. Plus, Babbel comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Right now, you can save up to 60% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash the take. That's babbel.com slash the take for up to 60% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. While Will Smith created the model for the buff clown, it would take another massive movie star to make it the norm. Hip, yes, a man! What the rock is cooking! In the early 2000s, Dwayne The Rock Johnson was a massively successful wrestler looking to establish himself as a movie star, but he faced a dilemma. Hollywood, they didn't know what the hell to do with me. I mean, I was this half black. Half Samoan, six foot four, 275 pound pro wrestler. With so few antecedents, The Rock consciously modeled his approach on Will Smith, saying, I want Will Smith's career, but I want to do it bigger and better. The Rock's first leading role as the Scorpion King in a prequel to The Mummy Returns has all the hallmarks of a Will Smith character. A wisecracking badass who sometimes ends up the subject of mockery, but still saves the world and gets the girl. Yeah. The Rock established his tough guy cred with films like Walking Tall and The Rundown, but he also undercut it with comedy, such as his role in Be Cool, playing a flamboyant bodyguard and aspiring actor. I'm just trying to be strong for my squad. And I'm trying to make it right. You want to make it right? Then when you go to nationals, bring it. Scene. As his star grew, The Rock made sure to mix in comedy roles, often mocking his own image as a masculine icon. Like with Will Smith, his comedic gifts made him more accessible and less intimidating to white audiences, paving the way for him to become a four-quadrant star, ripped but goofy, masculine yet sensitive. Don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. While the mold of the silly action hero was pioneered by men of color in part to placate the conscious or unconscious bias of white audiences, it became such an extraordinary moneymaker that it was only a matter of time before white actors capitalized on this trend. The first actor to realize that punchlines went down easier when licked off a six-pack was Ryan Reynolds, who rose to fame with comedies like Van Wilder and Harold and Kumar go to White Castle before bulking up for Blade Trinity. The fat lady should be singing, right? About now. <laughs> this is awkward. But Reynolds struggled to find the right balance in movies like X-Men Origins and Green Lantern before finally getting it right in Deadpool. Fourth wall break inside a fourth wall break. That's like 16 walls. 
In the meantime, another funny guy was mastering this formula. That is the coolest sentence I've ever heard somebody talk. Chris Pratt broke through as the lovable idiot Andy Dwyer on the NBC comedy Parks and Rec. I didn't actually sell my last car, I just forgot where I parked it. When they say 2% milk, I don't know what the other 98% is. The character was first introduced as kind of a loser, mooching off his girlfriend Anne, but as the show progressed, Andy became a more likable, bigger part of the show, as well as simply bigger. When creator Michael Shore told Pratt he'd be happy if the actor gained 30 to 40 pounds, Pratt took it as a challenge, once eating 12 entire racks of ribs while filming a scene. As Pratt's weight grew, the show turned his physique into a gag. Oh, I'm going to die. I'm so tired. Everything hurts. Running is impossible. But when Pratt began to seek out film roles, he started to slim down and bulk up, turning himself into a massive mound of muscles to star in Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. By grafting muscles onto his comic talents, Pratt became the face and pectorals of two of the top franchises in the world, in addition to becoming the voice of a third. You can pick up their sets, can't you? I was with the Navy, not the Navajo. Other everyman comedy stars followed this trajectory, with The Office's John Krasinski having his body fat percentage in 2015 to play a Navy SEAL, and even the 45-year-old Paul Rudd pulling off a six-pack to play Ant-Man. I had to work out like crazy right. and uh, eat a lot of fish. Meanwhile, already muscular actors noticed the trend as well. Zac Efron and Channing Tatum both embraced the role of hilarious meathead. My balls say we need to go over there and check it yeah. out. Your balls said that? Yes, they did. Because my balls say, you should just take it easy right here. Just chill. Why the f do your balls sound like three year old girls? Former wrestlers like John Cena and Dave Batista showed off a wide range of comedy chops. And even Thor himself, Chris Hemsworth, turned out to have a surprising skill for comedy, first in 2016's remake of Ghostbusters, and then in Taika Waititi's superhero comedy Thor Ragnarok. This is my crown, the source of my power. Oh, that's a crown. I thought it was a big eyebrow. In one of the most talked about transformations, Kumail Nanjiani morphed himself from the skinny nerd of Silicon Valley. I'm much more handsome than you know. My face is completely symmetrical. Into a bona fide Instagram thirst trap. For many, Nanjiani felt like the last domino. The world was so hungry for buff clowns, you never knew when your favorite comedian might swear off carbs, hire a personal trainer, and reappear a year later with shoulders the size of hams. Given that the ranks of buff clown movie stars are swelling faster than Kumail Nanjiani's biceps, we can't help asking why. After 50 years of non-stop buffets of badassery, why did Hollywood suddenly decide we needed a side of silly? No one likes to show off. Unless what they're showing off is dope as f The secret to why the buff clown has taken over the circus lies in its original purpose, making heroes less intimidating and more accessible. While humor originally served as an antidote to audience discomfort with black masculinity, it seems to work just as well with all masculinity. And as society at large has begun to grapple more with the dangers of toxic masculinity, we've begun to reject the stoic masculinity of traditional action stars and look for something friendlier. Together. Together. You're a good friend, French. Being willing to be the butt of the joke lets the audience know that the star is game for anything and rejects old ideas encapsulated by Margaret Atwood's famous quote, men are afraid that women will laugh at them, women are afraid that men will kill them. It's not wise at all to make fun of me like that. It brings out the worst in me. The rejection of old school masculinity extends beyond just humor as the buff clown is much more willing to show sensitivity and mutual support. You go out there, you do your job and you take them down. Manny's and Petty's at the mall later on today. This willingness to push past expectations even extends to flirting with queerness, such as The Rock and Zac Efron's kiss in Baywatch. It was an awesome kiss and one off the bucket list for me. Or Ryan Reynolds in pretty much every movie. You a top or a bottom? Ugh, doesn't matter. The prison's gonna decide for us. Ignoring old taboos becomes a reassurance to the audience that these modern muscle men are nothing like the old version that caused so much trouble. While the rise of the buff clown reveals our discomforts, it also reveals masculinity's continued power. After all, the buff clown retains all the physical trappings of manliness. They may talk the talk of pushing against masculinity, but it's only after they've walked the walk on the elliptical for three hours. 
At times, it can seem like the buff clown is the male equivalent of a supermodel posing for Vanity Fair flaunting her armpit hair. It challenges gendered restrictions, but only in the context of someone who is clearly traditionally attractive and able-bodied. Even the flirtation with queerness stays only flirtation. None of the actors who fit into the buff clown archetype have ever been linked to a male or non-binary romantic partner, and most are happily married to women who are as traditionally attractive as they are. I want to thank uh, my wife who is everything to me. While the buff clown turns out to not be that different from the hero archetypes it replaced, it also has an additional downside. Being funny and a good actor and maintaining the body of a Greek god demands a ton of work. The secret is you can't do it in a month. Thank you. I it, like that, It though. takes eight months and or a year or a lifetime. The old mold of what made a man, effortless cool, physical dominance, emotional aloofness, and the ability to occasionally crack wise to remind everyone else that you're better was always an impossible standard. But rather than replacing it with something more reasonable, we've created a new standard that is even less realistic, all the muscles and none of the hangups. And with the buff clown muscling in on all the roles, there is very little room for anyone else. Kumail Nanjiani has said of his transformation, I needed to change how people saw me so I could have the type of opportunities I was excited about. Now I get opportunities to play a normal guy. I was not seen as a normal guy before this. You know what my nickname was when I was a kid? Well, Pakistani Denzel. You look nothing like him. Denzel Washington and his beautiful smile. You look ridiculous. The fact that we've made getting jacked a necessity for looking normal reveals just how impossible and even dangerous a standard we're setting. Buff celebrities have teams of a dozen trainers, nutritionists, and caterers, and they still nearly die of thirst to achieve the effect. When you're dehydrating for three days, you get to the point on the last day where you can smell water. That level of obsession can also cause body dysmorphia. Even after his big Instagram reveal, Nanjiani has admitted that he struggles with the obsession. Quote, I know exactly what I weigh every day, and if I could change something, I would love to not have to think about that. People are like, do you feel good about yourself? I'm like, no, this is the most miserable I've ever been in my life. <laughs> I've never felt worse about myself, really? Alan. And since the buff clown has become the standard of beauty in film, it's inevitable that he becomes a source of comparison for actually normal guys. The buff clown archetype hasn't changed as much about the Hollywood hero as it might first appear. Blockbusters still glamorize macho muscles at the expense of complex characters. What are you, Aquaman? Because I'm really confused. They contribute to an unattainably muscular body ideal that can even be dangerous in a time when male eating disorders are rising fast. Still, while it might not fix everything, the buff clown has opened things up, enabling a more diverse understanding of what makes a hero, sending the message that real men are supportive and sensitive. Pretty tough guy. You're tough, the man who cries through every cold. And paving the way for action movies that are funny, sentimental, and free to be themselves. I like your plan, except it sucks, so let me do the plan, and that way it might be really good. This is The Take on your favorite movie shows and culture. Subscribe so you can watch all of our videos.